In this lecture, I'll demonstrate how to use a momentary button with one of the analog inputs on the LabJack T4. It's a very simple experiment, but it does give us the opportunity to have a look at how the analog input value shows up in the dashboard and also in the register matrix. Let's begin with the wiring and I remove the cap of the button so you can see what's happening easier. On the top pin, I've got the red jumper wire, which is connected to the VS pin on the lab jack. Now the VS pin provides five volts power for whatever analog device I have connected to my circuit. I'm gonna use my uh, multimeter here to check out this voltage and confirm it's five volts. So um, red to VS, um, black to GND, and as you can see on the multimeter, we get uh, 4.982 approximately volts there. All right, now we'll see what LabJack itself tells us when the button is pressed. Uh, then the other pin on the button via the yellow wire is connected to analog input zero. And then via a pull down resistor, the same pin is brought down to ground. So there's the black jumper wire going to the GND port. All right, I'm going to put the cap back on. And let's go over to Kipling. I've selected the dashboard and we are now looking at this reading right here, analog input zero. Button is unpressed, voltage is approximately uh, zero volts. I'm going to press the button now and it will take it up to 4.997 volts. All right, so nothing fancy here. I'm going to um, also use my multimeter to do, take the same measurement on the GND and analog input zero pins like that. Just trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see it. Just move it out of this way actually. Press the button. All right, and then we get the reading on the multimeter, 4.982 uh, volts, which is quite close to what Kipling is also saying. All right, so that's uh, one little experiment done, but let's have a look at the register matrix as well and uh, see how those readings look when we are accessing the registers directly. So here in the register matrix, tab i'm going to first search for analog input zero to see what registers come up and i'm also having a look at the documentation here this is the page that i showed you in the previous lecture uh, section 4 or subsection 14 about analog inputs and scrolling down to this part of the document where we can get information about the registers. We'll see that there are two registers relevant to what we are doing right now, which is taking analog measurements of those ports. And that's the analog input number port plus the analog input number underscore binary ports. So the first one is this. I'm going to select it and move it up to the active registers section of the register metric page. And then let's look for the binary one there you go and this one here i'm going to put it up there as well you can get more information about each one by clicking on the i button the information button and you can see what the address is uh, which is particularly useful when we start working with lua scripts later on what kind of number comes back by uh, a floating point 32 uh, bit uh, number and for the, uh, the binary version of the same reading we see the address is at 50,000. Um, the type of the number that is shown is a 32-bit integer and uh, this is a 24-bit binary representation of the voltage. Uh, despite the fact that it is a 24 binary representation in the register, the way that it is showing in the register matrix uh, readout 
is as a integer like this. So not, not particularly useful, but programmatically you can grab it, and that means through Lua, and you can grab it as a binary number. The analog input zero value though works as expected, and it gives us the same readings as it did earlier in the dashboard. Okay, so that was pretty simple. Now what I want to do in the next lecture is to replace the button with uh, a proper analog device, the potentiometer, and repeat the same experiment.